In this episode of Shareable Science, Beyond the Blog, we're going to explore antibodies and their use as a testing tool to identify who has been infected by the virus that causes COVID-19 and who has immunity. This is part two of a two-part video series. In the first part, we talk about what antibodies are and how they're useful as a potential therapeutic tool. Now we're going to turn to talking about how they can be used as a testing tool. So this falls under the heading of serological testing. And in a much earlier video in this series, we talked about types of testing and the difference between molecular tests, where you're looking for the presence of the, um, the molecular, the nuclear material left by the virus, and a serological test where you're looking at the body's immune response to infection by the virus. Um, so we're looking for the presence of antibodies that the body has produced as part of its immune response to infection. And these are generally blood-based tests. It might be a vial of blood, it might be a, a pinprick and a few drops of blood. Other groups are looking at trying this with um, things like saliva as well. There's a key set of questions that we have to answer before we can be assured that a serological test actually gives us uh, the kind of information we need to look at who's potentially been infected and now has immunity. In general, it does appear that if you are infected with this virus, you will produce antibodies. So there's some caveats around that, the data are still coming in, but in general, yes. And it looks like these antibodies generally are being produced about 10 to 12 days after the onset of symptoms. So serological tests are not useful for determining if someone is in the early stage of an infection. They don't work, you won't get an answer until well after you are um, into symptoms and actively battling the virus. Uh, it does appear that if you produce antibodies, you do have some protection against being reinfected. Again, remember, this is a new disease, a new infection, so we don't have a whole lot of data to work from. But what we've got and what we've seen from other coronaviruses is suggestive that if you have antibodies, you do have protection, and that that level of protection is lasting you at least several months and maybe even a couple years before it begins to fade. So it's a significant amount of protection. So again, we're still gathering data on this, and the answers that I'm giving you are broad generalizations, but we have the information that tells us that antibody tests can potentially be really useful. And you're hearing a lot about this idea of antibody passports, knowing who has been infected and therefore who has some level of protection and can re-enter the workforce. There are three types of these antibody tests um, that are being used right now for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Rapid detection test, an ELISA, and a neutralization assay. We are not going to go into the science behind each of those, but each of them has pros and cons, and you can see that really kind of summarized on this chart here. So the rapid detection test, true to its name, gives you answers in minutes and is relatively inexpensive. It can tell you if antibodies are present, but it can't do much more than that. It can't tell you how many antibodies you have. Do you have a low level? Do you have a relatively high level? You need an ELISA test for that, but that gives you results in hours, not in minutes. And then if you want to know if your specific antibodies are protective, if they neutralize the virus, you can't get that from a rapid detection test or an ELISA. You have to go to a neutralization assay. The challenge is that that takes days to give you that information and it's the most expensive. But there are multiple tests out there. Dozens and dozens of tests are now available on the market. Most of them are rapid detection tests. Several of them are also ELISAs. Um, there are some key points that we want to be aware of when you are deciding if a test is right for a population, if a test is right for a workforce, you want to know that this test does the things that you are measuring, is it detecting what you need to know, and does it have a high level of accuracy? And to be honest, there are a whole range of accuracy across these tests. Some of them very, very accurate, some of them not nearly as accurate as you might want them to be. And the key is that a test needs to identify those who have had COVID-19. So this is its sensitivity. So if somebody's been infected, you want to be able to detect those antibodies. On the flip side, if somebody's not been infected, 
you want no antibody detection. So you want to identify those people that don't have antibodies. This is your specificity. You want to know who your true positives are and your true negatives. And you don't want a lot of false results in either direction. Okay, that's a quick overview of serological tests, specifically these antibody tests for the detection of who has antibodies against COVID-19. I hope you find this useful. If you think this is science worth sharing, please do just that and share that with people around you who might also find this valuable information. Thanks for watching this episode. I look forward to seeing you again. Take care and stay safe.